Michael Lusgarden is a scientist at the Tufts University Human Nutrition Research Center on Aging in Boston, Massachusetts. His research currently focuses on the role of the gut microbiome and serum metabolome on muscle mass and function in older adults. In this series of interviews, Dr. Lusgarden shares his experience with his rigorous N of 1 experiment over the last seven years and shows how we or anyone can conduct a similar trial by tracking food, exercise, and sleep, measure results, and derive relationships between them with a goal of extending our health span. And with that, let me start the interview. Hello, Dr. Luscott. So it's great to have you back on Modern Health Span for this third interview. So it's always a pleasure to have you on our channel. Hi, Richard. So, Dr. Luscott, so you've been running like a quantified N of one experiment on yourself for a while and you post updates on your very informative website. What I'd like to get into today is how you actually conduct this. So what you're measuring, what targets you're aiming for. So I think this will be very useful for our audience and ourselves to learn from an expert such as yourself, as many of us are conducting our own similar experiments, if not as rigorous as yours, uh, with the aim of extending our health span. So kind of, could you start with where did you get started? I mean, where, how long have you been doing this and where did you get started? Sure. So uh, YouTube channel, More, I put everything mostly on the, the YouTube channel these days. Uh, so, uh, and to me, uh, even though, you know, I uh, document all of my, you know, quote unquote biohacking, uh, I generally don't like that term, but that's the easiest way to explain it. Um, since I documented all through videos uh, nowadays, um, uh, in terms of being an expert for me, I, I don't, I don't know that I'd be for me, the end goal is extending my health and longevity. So if I actually do achieve my goal of breaking the, you know, the, uh, the lifespan record, 122 years, then people can call me an expert. For now, it's, it's all just, you know, uh, uh, you know, using a data-driven approach, my own data to try to optimize, you know, health and longevity. So, um, yeah, so I, I've had this idea for a very long time. And actually, it goes back as far as, uh, you know, before the year 2000. So, I got my first university degree in 1994 and then didn't know what I wanted to do with my life for about a five-year period. And then during that time, I picked up uh, Roy Walford, Dr. Roy Walford's book, who was a famous calorie restriction researcher. And uh, he basically published the book called uh, Beyond the 120-Year Diet, which I read during that time period. And uh, he had a little bit of biomarker data. So uh, his, his work... Um, focused on biosphere two, where people were encaged, or I shouldn't say encaged, but it ended up being encaged and that, you know, that, that big dome and, and they, they, the goal was to be self-sustainable. And anyway, the long story short is they ended up being calorie restricted. They measured a whole bunch of blood biomarkers and they saw improvements in health over the time that they were there. So this is where the idea of, of, um, tracking my own biomarkers, uh, arose. So it's more than a 20 year, 20 year journey. So, um, with that in mind, I was interested in studying the biochemistry of, of, uh, longevity. Uh, so, and especially when you, when you start with the premise that aging just doesn't happen, you wake up one day and you're quote unquote old disease doesn't just happen. You know, you don't just wake up one day. It just, it, it didn't just happen overnight unless you catch a bad infection, which in that case is, uh, is another story. But so aging and disease are biochemical processes that happen over many decades. So my premise, and it has always been my premise is that if you track these things in youth and you know what your youthful biochemical profile and healthful, because youth can be associated with an adverse biochemical profile. So if you're youthful and healthy um, uh, and you know what that looks like, in theory, you can design your own diet, your own fitness re regime, your own sleep, you know, how long should you sleep, all of the variables to maintain youth for as long as you physically can uh, and potentially slow disease and maximize longevity. That's always been my premise. So in order to get there, you know, what tools did I need? So I needed to learn about biochemistry. So I went and got a second college degree in biochemistry. And then I went to graduate school for physiology so I can get a big picture in addition to the small picture of the biochemistry. Um, and then actually my, my PhD is not in what, well, it's not in, in this biohacking quote unquote science that I'm doing. This is like my side project, but it's also kind of like a, a uh, you know, a semi half full-time job, however you want to. You know, so I'm still a scientist studying the microbiome in muscle and aging. So, um, so then when I started tracking, it was, it wasn't very serious. You know, it was once a year, I'd go to my doctor for my yearly physical. And then when I, when I got my blood test results, I would record it all in an Excel file. And then I wasn't tracking my diet in terms of, um, 
recording everything in a spreadsheet and, and uh, you know, looking for the correlations. I wasn't doing that. Um, so it was once a year and just, you know, okay, this is what my data is. I, I do a little bit of a literature search and, and it was kind of guesswork, right? So, um, so then in, uh, so that was somewhere around 2008, once a year. And then uh, 2015, I had the idea, it was like, this just isn't enough data. It isn't enough data. It isn't scientific enough. Uh, if I'm really going to get serious about this, I need to I need to step up my game. I need to weigh all my foot. I really need to use a scientific approach to this. Um, and uh, so, so I just wanted to go off a side tangent there. I see a lot of in the anti-aging community people taking one supplement, two supplements, fifty supplements, and it's based on basically animal studies and RCTs, and they don't actually have any objective biomarker data of their own to show that the net effect of whatever supplement they're taking is detrimental neutral or beneficial. It's just based on hope. So I didn't, I didn't want to have that. I wanted to have so much data that I could say with some level of certainty, okay, uh, this having this much fat may be optimal for this panel of biomarkers and, or this much carbohydrate or this much fiber or protein. I wanted to really get after a, a scientific approach that's, that was driven on the data. So in 2015, I started, uh, using chronometer. I'm not sponsored by them. Any, any of those related apps will do. And then after I, I enter all of the food that I ate, which I weighed with a food scale, I put that into an Excel spreadsheet, including the macro and micronutrients. And unfortunately, when I started in 2015, I didn't have the idea to track individual food amounts, which to me may be more important than the macro and micronutrients, because, you know, we're, we're trying to distill whole foods down to these 40 or so macro and micronutrients. And that's very reductionist. So um, I wish I was tracking food from 2015, but I started that in about 2018. So uh, then I stepped up my game where I was blood testing now once every two months. So instead of having one data point per year and then trying to make dietary changes for a full year, now I've got basically 60 day periods for diet that correspond to a blood test. So I take, because I have all of my dietary data in between blood tests, the average dietary intake for that 60 day period corresponds to that blood test. And then you just play it forward for every subsequent blood test. You have a dietary intake that corresponds to a blood test. And then with enough data, with enough blood tests, you can start to see correlations between stuff in the diet and, and the uh, biomarkers. Now the fun starts because there may be five things that are correlated with a given biomarker. What do you try? What do you do? And this idea that, you know, if you're going to run a real scientific experiment, you change only one thing and change nothing else. Well, this works great if you're a mouse in a cage. But for humans with so many different variables, it's, it, from my perspective, someone that's highly motivated, impossible. So this is where the correlations come in, right? You have to look at correlations and there are going to be multiple interventions that you could try at a given time, whether it's adding more of this food, cutting fat, increasing carbs, increasing protein, whatever it may be, more B6, more niacin. So, um, but with enough data, and I can't say how much, how many blood tests it will take for the person, for each person, because in some ways I'm still, you know, it's not a perfect science. So I'm still working towards, you know, identifying the optimal diet, but I've made a lot of progress um, and learned a lot during this journey to help others uh, find their own end of one optimization through diet, exercise, and all that. Um, so, so, uh, so now I have more than 30 blood tests in some cases for things that are just found on the standard chemistry panel. So you go to the doctor for your yearly physical, they're looking at markers of, you know, immune function, red blood cells, uh, liver and kidney function, the lipoproteins, glucose, et cetera. These are standard, you know, biomarkers that have been, that have been studied for 50 to hundred years plus, depending on the, on the biomarker. So it's well known how the, how these things change during aging and how they change with all cause mortality risk. So, uh, you know, I use that data to guide my decisions. If I know that albumin, you know, levels decline during aging and lower levels, relatively lower levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk, well, clearly I want to try to have my albumin levels as high as possible. So I do, I, I look at my correlations between the diet and the, and the blood biomarkers, and then I make changes and then I reevaluate with the next biomarker data. And then I reevaluate the correlation. So it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, Tesla's neural net for self-driving, you know, it gets data, it makes predictions based on those data to drive, and then it gets more data and new data. So it reevaluates all of its data and improves its predictions. Uh, so, and I find that I get closer to the truth, you know, so uh, for example, I thought bananas based on the correlations in my data were associated with higher glucose. So, okay, if I take out bananas, 
will my glucose levels be still, you know, higher or lower? So it didn't change it. So that strong correlation for banana intake with glucose, which was strong because it, uh, my glucose levels stayed where they were. Clearly it wasn't bananas. Something else is impacting it. So the correlations will either strengthen, stay the same or get worse. So, all right, we, I introduced a lot there. Let's, I guess we got to unpack it a little bit more piece by piece. Yes, we do. Yeah.